It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Um, so this first one is from a longtime fan of the show. This is from UG Shea. Brian, UG Shea. You see what you see what they did there? It's not like UGA, it's UG Shea. Oh, I'm, I, thank God you um, gave me that. Well, because she has a Georgia thing. Oh, it's okay. So this is what UG Shea said. Uh, I'm following the foo, but I want to retire early. Is it okay to move from step six, maxing out retirement options, to step seven and contribute to a taxable brokerage count a little early? Uh, hashtag go dogs, hashtag go bills. I think that last part was not part of the question. Uh, um, basically, it wants to know when is it okay, like, or is it okay to ever deviate from the foo? Do our individual, unique, and specific circumstances determine when and how we approach things that relates to foo, specifically for someone who's thinking about retiring early, specifically someone who might need to have a bridge account or some bridge money? What advice would you give UG Shea? Well, the key thing there from Shea is that FIRE does create a unique thing. And this is what I love about the financial order of operations is it works for people who are part of the FIRE movement and think they're going to retire or leave the workforce a little bit earlier. And it works for people who are going the more traditional path because we share the more traditional path of you've got to be saving 25% of your gross income. Anybody who is part of the FIRE movement, you completely understand, nope, that's not enough. You're probably mm -hmm. going to have to, and we've done content on this, depending upon how early you're leaving the workforce, it might be 30%, 35, 40. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, you're like, that's insane. But we see people who are, who are part of that fire mm -hmm. movement who are saving 50% of their gross income. And that's how this inter, inter, intersects with the financial order of operations is that, remember, to get to step six, max out retirement, the key contributor to there on moving to step seven, hyperaccumulation, is that you have to be saving 25% of your gross income. And we've done the math on this. I think it's somewhere in the 80000 and above. Of range, you know, it's hard for people who make more than that. You're going to have, you're going to do 25%, reach the maximum the government lets you put in those accounts. Then you'll move on to step seven hyperaccumulation. But people who make less than 80 something thousand will probably, if you did 25%, you're not going to max out the retirement, but you have graduated to hyper saver and getting on to building that after tax account. So, Shay, what I would tell you, take a cold hard look at. What is your income, household income? Mm -hmm. Take out your savings and investment rate. Compare the two. If you are, you know, not making six figures, then yeah, once you get to twenty five percent, you can move to hyper accumulation mm -hmm. step seven of the financial order of operations and save in that after tax taxable account. And then, if you're a person that makes more than a hundred thousand dollars. You probably need to make sure you're first getting through step six, then going to step seven, where you can do the three bucket strategy and, and do those after tax brokerage account assets. Love it. 